So good morning. Uh, welcome to the Callaway Chamber of Commerce uh, webinar on the Missouri Small Business Development Center. We are so excited to have this group presenting for us today to give our small businesses in Callaway County an idea of what services the Small Business Development Center uh, can provide. Uh, so Mark, I'm going to turn it over to you to let you introduce uh, your crew uh, to our participants today. Well, thank you so much, and, and thank you for allowing us to uh, talk with you this morning. Um, 9 a.m., I know everyone's busy. So we have a short presentation uh, about the SBDC, and, um, and then after that, we'll take some questions, and, um, and hopefully you find it worthwhile. Uh, my name is Mark Christian. I'm the director at the University of Missouri Small Business Development Center in Columbia. Uh, we, we cover about six counties out of our center. Uh, there are, I believe, 14 centers that cover the state of Missouri. And um, in addition to small business development, I'm also a procurement technical assistance uh, specialist with government contracting. So if anyone's interested in pursuing government contracts in our area, uh, I'm more than happy to do that. And we also work with certification, such as... Um, uh, women-owned, minority-owned, veteran-owned, those type of things, and with federal contracting and state contracting. Um, in addition to me, you have uh, Traven Shelton. And Traven, how are you this morning? I'm doing fantastic, Mark. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, Traven is our um, Director of Business Growth Services, specializing in helping those businesses that have, you know, 10, 20 employees, something like that, Traven, right? Take the next steps that want to grow. And, uh, and he's been with the program for about five years. And then we also have Bob Schwartz and Jennifer Pressberry, and they're heading up uh, a new initiative that we'll talk about uh, that I'm really excited to introduce you guys to. Uh, which is the uh, SBDC Engagement Center that's helping us reach businesses. Uh, I, I know as a director, I've been here about two years in, uh, in Columbia, and that everything seems to be so much around Columbia, right? And uh, a lot of resources and so forth. And, and so this engagement center is, is hopefully going to help us uh, with outreach and reach those businesses out in Callaway that um, maybe you've never even heard of the Small Business Development Center. So I'm very excited. So today, let's see here. Um, let me talk a little bit about who we are and what we do and the new initiative I mentioned um, to assist businesses in Callaway County. And then how do you connect with the Missouri SBDC at MU? Okay. So who we are. So this kind of gives us, uh, we are, the Small Business Development Center is funded by the Small Business Administration. And when, what they do, they basically give X amount of dollars to the university to handle our administration. And then the university contracts with other organizations, other universities, other uh, nonprofit organizations throughout the state to provide small business development center services, right? To assist small business owners. And uh, small business, uh, as defined by the SBA, is anyone that basically, there's, there's some rough numbers there, but if you have 500 employees or less, it's kind of a good, there, there's also some um, uh, revenue numbers and so forth uh, involved in that, and there's a formula. But in general, if you have 500 employees or less, uh, per the SBA, you are a small business. And so we work with every, everyone from the person that has that idea to the person that may have three or 400 employees. And so it's, it's really wide. What we do, we primarily, we do a lot of one-on-one -on -one counseling, right? We, uh, you'll sit down with one counselor, two counselors, three counselors, depending on. Uh, here at Columbia, uh, we do a lot of co-counseling. So you typically, when a small business owner meets with one of our counselors, you actually meet with one or two, maybe three people, depending on what your your uh, uh, you know where you're at and uh, and and what issues that you have on your plate. Uh, everything is at no no cost. 
uh, even our training is at low cost or just maybe above, you know, whatever cost that we have, uh, we may pass that along. Uh, but oftentimes it's at uh, no cost, uh, one-on-one -on -one counseling, advice, resources and research is always at no cost. Uh, you know, there's some things that may cost us money uh, that we pass along those costs, but oftentimes, uh, you know, counts, counseling is always at no cost. And we say no cost because uh, we, we, our only goal is to help business owners succeed, right? Your success is how we win. And if you're successful, then we're successful. And, and I think it's, you know, that's one thing I love about the job. All we have to do is help you win and help you make that decision. And some of the times that decision is, I need to close my shop, or this isn't a good idea. I don't need to invest in this, or I don't need to expand right now. I need to wait, or you know, whatever that is, whatever that decision is. And, and our approach is to provide you information and the resources to help make the right decision for you. And the right decision is, is whatever is best for you at a given time. And uh, so we do that through advising and counseling. And then we also provide training, uh, you know, from we, we're working on a, a new training with SEO. Um, in February, we plan on la launching a six part series called uh, Based on the Profit Mastery. If you're not familiar with that, that is a great financial analysis program. It teaches you all about how, you know, what your PL means, what your cash flow statement is, and what your balance uh, sheet is, and how they interact. And now, as a business owner, you can look at those numbers and determine how you're doing, right? And what the relationship between the different uh, parts of those um, uh, financial sheets and what they mean. So, uh, I'm very excited about that too. I think that's going to, that's something we've never offered here. Uh, at least not in the last 10 years in the state of Missouri, uh, but a lot of banks, you know, a lot of commercial lenders go through the program. And so we're, ho we're hoping to offer it to small business owners. And, um, and then of course, uh, we will have some bankers in the class. And, um, but it's, it's very successful on a national level. And so we're happy to bring that here to, at first to the Columbia area, you know, to this, uh, to mid Missouri. Um, as we talked about, we, we work with clients from, hey, I have an idea to, hey, I really want to grow, right? And, and I'm not sure what I need to do. Where's my market? And, and so forth. And, and our only goal to, 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 is, is your success, right? And, and you pay us by sharing that success with us. That's how we really get paid. So you make your first million dollars or you, your sales go up by a million dollars. You get a loan for, um, you know, from the bank for an extra hundred thousand to invest in that inventory you need. And you share that, you hire 10 new employees, you share that information with us. And, and that's, that's how we get paid. And we keep working together um, and, um, and keep helping you build your business and, and moving forward, right? Sorry, I seem to have a little bit of lag this morning uh, on, on these slides. I keep clicking the slides and they're not coming up. Um, so how we help. So we do a lot of business plans. Uh, we, we use a online platform called LiPlan and LiPlan uh, allows you to develop a business plan that's, that is, uh, fits SBA specs through any web browser. All right. And then we can uh, co-counsel and, and talk over without you ever having to leave your, your office and immediately leave my office and we can talk online. Uh, and then, of course, we have uh, experts and counselors throughout the state, uh, 14 centers, as I mentioned. Um, you know, one of our specialties at Mizzou is uh, tech, tech counseling, where we assist with uh, pursuing small business innovation research grants and small business uh, technical re research grants. So it's really the same thing. It's uh, federal dollars to develop new products and services that the federal government may be interested in. And uh, you know, obviously through various market research, tools and resources, education, training, capitalization, financial analysis and networking. And then, um, 
uh, Traven is is going to help me out here and and talk about all the various resources that we have. Traven, good deal. <clears throat> Appreciate it. Thank you, Mark. Uh, also, too, thank you everybody for being here. Thank you, Tamara, uh, for putting this together. Really appreciate it. Uh, really excited to talk to some businesses there in, in Callaway County. And uh, I'm guessing m most of your, your businesses are in the, the Fulton region. Is that right, Tamara? You might be on mute there. I apologize, putting you on the spot, asking you questions. <laughs> yes, <laughs> sorry, I was on mute. No worries. Yeah, good deal. I, I have a couple of ties there. I had a couple, my one of my best friends played basketball there uh, at William Woods in Westminster, and uh, he's best friends with the current basketball coach Justin Gilmore there at Fulton. So uh, some ties to the area, and, and uh, hopefully you all are doing well. I know it's just kicking the season off. So, anyways, appreciate appreciate the time. Uh, Mark laid the the a great uh, uh, groundwork there, the foundation for who we are, what we do. And I was just going to get into a couple specific examples of some of the tools and resources that we have. Uh, so you can kind of say, okay, well, what does this mean for me? Because uh, that's really what we're here uh, to, to talk about is what does this mean for you as a business owner, a business owner that's trying to, to grow your business, sustain your business, and of course, be, uh, you know, be strong for your economy there. So, so that's what we want to do is take the next 10 or 15 minutes to just talk through some specific examples and resources um, about what it is we, we have done with other businesses and what it is that we would like to do uh, with you all um, uh, if, if that comes to fruition. So really the next step from this is uh, after this presentation is how can we connect with you all as business owners uh, to, to help you with whatever that next step is. So, um, you know, none of, none of this is a silver bullet. Uh, nothing is, this is going to be the end all be all. But what, what hopefully happens from this is we entice you enough to say, let's have a meeting and let's talk through some, some of what it is you all can offer as a small business center. So uh, appreciate that. Again, uh, Mark said my name is Trayvon Shelton. I'm actually over in the Dixon, Missouri area. Uh, my, my territory, so to speak, runs from Lebanon, Missouri to uh, Washington, so kind of that 44 corridor, but I have statewide responsibility uh, for the, the growth businesses, those businesses in that 10 to 100 range uh, and a million to 50 million in sales. Uh, and uh, J Jennifer, Bob, been working with them a lot on the, the new engagement and attraction center. So that's kind of my place, my place here. Uh, and uh, ho hopefully can work with some of your businesses there with Mark and Callaway County. So real quick, business plans. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people uh, don't have a business plan. Uh, a lot of people have uh, maybe written a business plan uh, for, for a course or for uh, some professional development they were going through. Some people may have written a plan and put it up on a shelf. Uh, some people may actually have a plan that they work every day. I always say, you know, a business plan is not a static document. A uh, business plan is something that uh, that works for you, whether that be 10 bullet points, uh, whether that be uh, 40 pages, uh, wh whatever that plan is, as long as it's driving and helping you decide what next step to take, that, that's what a business plan is, making that business case for increasing profit, decreasing expenses, or becoming uh, you know, a more sustainable business. That's what a business plan is. So, um, Real quick example, uh, you know, on, on a business plan that you could have, you could be going after it and in some ways we might be able to help you. So you could be going after maybe the toothpaste market. So this is just a quick example. Uh, and you have some new gum uh, that's going to, to keep people from having to actually brush their teeth. Um, so you think the problem in the market is that people don't want to spend time doing this. They just want to pop a piece of gum in and that actually completely um, alleviates the need to, to brush someone's teeth. This was just an example I thought of 15 minutes ago, and I thought, wow, this is a good business idea. Uh, so, <laughs> so anyways, uh, so, so you pop the gum in, but what you have to identify is, well, what's that target market? And you, you, most people that go into a bank may say, well, everybody's my target. Everybody brushes their teeth. Never say that. Uh, that's, the, that's the worst <laughs> answer you can ever tell a bank or anybody is that everybody's your market. So what we would do as the business development center is say, okay, well, you know, who likes to chew gum? Uh, who maybe has dentures and can't chew gum? Uh, you know, who, you know, is it kids? You can't, you can't market to, to maybe kids because they can't chew gum yet. Uh, you know, so you start to, to work through who that actual, actual attainable market is. And then we can go out and try to help you find research to maybe target those types of individuals and actually talk to those customers. Uh, that's one big thing that we preach here at the, at the business development center is actually doing that customer discovery and, and verifying what that product market fit is before you, before you take that next step, so to speak. So um, if I were to ask you, and, and Tamara will put you on the spot again, if I were to say, Tamara, do you like uh, chocolate chip ice cream or vanilla ice cream? If I asked you that question, what would you say? Both. 
Both, okay. Uh, but what did I instantly assume? That you liked ice cream. Exactly. When really, my question, my question should have been, uh, Tamara, when you crave something sweet, what do you do? Or maybe even what causes you to crave something sweet? So now I'm starting to actually get to the root of that, you know, of that, of that cause of you wanting something sweet. So I can actually go out and, and build that business based on the, the want or the need or the actual market cue from that, from that customer. What you do is you have to get enough data points to, to verify that. So that, that's kind of what we preach and what we do with our business plans is, you know, how can we make this real? How can we make this tangible? So you actually know, you know, pretty well that you have a product market fit for what you're doing. And then let's build the business plan around that. So we want to build the bones first uh, to, you know, to, to make sure that there is a market fit and then help you with that business plan moving forward. And as Mark stated, uh, we have all kinds of tools. We have live plan uh, that we can work on with you uh, simultaneously, you know, offering uh, feedback and, you know, have you thought about this? Uh, and, and that's an online software that we can offer, you know, so that's, that's one tool. So you can go ahead, Mark, go to the next slide. Okay, so financials and analysis. Uh, who here with a show of hands likes financials? Just loves getting into to fi financial statements, business plan, I mean, uh, balance sheets, income statements, sales projections. We got any hands? Diane is <laughs> lot, the lot, only lot. hand going up, I'm sure. They <laughs> yeah. have one or two, but most of the time, you know, people like their, their business. They like what they do. They like, they like providing that good or that service, uh, but they really don't like the financials of it, you know, and, and that's okay. Uh, but but what, what you have to do is say, okay, do I have a blind spot somewhere and what resources do I have to fill those gaps? Uh, and that's one thing that, that we can do as, as the small business center say, okay, let's take your, let's take your balance sheet. Let's take your income statement. Let's common size those, which is taking it as a percentage of, of a metric. Uh, so if, if an income statement is common size, we, we would take it as a percentage of the sales. And then we can benchmark that with other, other people in, in your industry and say, okay, well, your cost of goods is, you know, 42%. And the industry is 25%. You know, we, we may need to look at our suppliers here and see what's going on. You know, maybe there's a good reason for that. Maybe there isn't. Uh, we, we can take a look at, at, at your salaries, your payroll, and say, okay, well, you know, industry average for, for your, you know, for, for your market, for your industry is, you know, 40%. And you're at 60%. You know, so what's going on there? Or maybe everything looks pretty clean and there's some additional things that we can draw from your financials. I always say, you know, it's kind of like if you have, um, if you're measuring your, um, you know, your, your heart rate, all of those things, uh, you know, that you're taking into account for your health, all those health numbers, you can't really make changes if you don't know your numbers. Uh, so it's the same thing about your business. You have to know that the financial stability and the financial health of your business to really be able to say, if I make this decision, am I doing it um, right for my business or maybe is it wrong for my business? You know, so that's really what we wanna assist with when it comes to financials is understanding those financial statements and really putting those to work for you as a business owner. Uh, so that's just a few examples. We have tools there, uh, ProfitSense, um, you know, different tools that we can take and input your data, which is what this report is showing here. Um, it, it showcases where you're healthy, where you're not, and then gives us things to work on for that. So not only do I talk about these things, but we have actual tools that we can enter your information in uh, and try to get you some good solid feedback to move forward with. So go ahead, Mark. Okay, uh, so market research. I uh, This isn't, uh, um, you know, probably the best language, but I always say crap in, crap out, right? Uh, if, if you've ever heard that. So if we're not asking the right question uh, to go out and actually get some market research on, it, it, it's going to be, you know, it's, it, it's, we're going to be running, running in circles, you know, chasing our tails, so to speak. So uh, just what I did with that ice cream example earlier, uh, let's really identify what it is that, that you need to help you take that next step. You know, is it identifying uh, what that total market is for the toothpaste, for that gum? Um, you know, or maybe is it really identifying who the competitors are out there that are offering similar products? I had uh, somebody come in that said, you know, I don't have any, uh, I don't have any competition. And I said, well, what about Amazon? And he said, oh, crap. Yeah, Amazon is my competition. <laughs> you know, so it's just thinking about those market dynamics. Who are you as a company? Who are those customers? And who, what does that competitive landscape look like? And where do you fit with all three of those? And what do you need help answering from a market research standpoint that can help you take that next step? So really, the, the market research side comes from, from us talking with you to really identify 
that root problem or that root opportunity uh, that we may be able to help you get some information around. And we have some, some proprietary tools for that. Uh, we, we have uh, three or four different uh, databases that we can uh, that we can access that can get you some of that information. But really, it's about asking the right question. Because uh, if we don't have the right question, we're going to be wasting our time. And that is not what we want to do with our business owners. You all are busy. Uh, we want to make sure your time is, is valuable. Uh, and, and you think we're adding value to that. So, so that's kind of how we work on the market research side. So uh, that's just real, a real quick example of, of three main things that, uh, that, that we talk with businesses about. And then the next three or four slides just kind of showcase some of those tools I'll give some quick examples uh, and, and then we can get into to any questions. We wanna make sure we leave time for that. So I, I talked about that customer discovery earlier um, and that's really where this business model canvas comes in. You know, it's, it's finding that product market fit. Who are your actual customers and why in the heck are they buying from you? Um, I have a, a quick example. I do a, a boots to business um, a, a training uh, for the, the, the Veterans Center, the Veterans Outreach Center. And, and I go over normally to Fort Leonard Wood uh, and, and talk with those, those businesses or to talk with those, those transitioning uh, military members about if, they, if they're an entrepreneur and want to start a business. And I already had a guy that, that was in business and I said, well, what do you do? And he said, well, I make stuff. So I paused for him and I said, how, how successful are you at marketing? I make stuff. And he said, not very successful. And I said, okay, <laughs> well, tell me a little bit about the, the, the products that you make. And what we found out was that he could take somebody's um, antique or, or, or a different piece and create maybe that, that nostalgic experience. You, know, you have an armoire that, uh, you know, that maybe was, was handed down in your, in your family and you need it restored or you want something built that looks like it. That's really what, what he was doing, but he hadn't quite verbalized it yet. So, so we looked at the canvas and we said, okay, well, who are your customers and what value are you providing? And let's make sure that these match up. And once he really understood, I'm, st I'm selling that nostalgic experience. This is who my target is. Well, now we can take those next steps to say, okay, let's build out your business model. Uh, let's build out your business plan and, and let's go after more of these types of customers. Uh, it sounds like it's common sense. Uh, but a lot of times doing the work and taking the time to do it is not common sense because it's tough to do. You know, so I would say, are you talking to your customers all the time? Are you talking to your employees all the time? And, you know, if, if you're somebody that goes in and says, you know, well, we do this right, you know, and, and, you, and you put that out there, sometimes that doesn't give your employees the ability to say, well, I'm seeing this, you know, in our business, uh, you know, because you want them to take an entrepreneurial spirit as well. So, you know, how can we do, how, how can we, how can we leverage our employees and our clients to really build our business? And that's really what that canvas is all about. Um, so that's one, one tool real quick. Uh, Growth Wheel um, is another tool that we have. Uh, it, it segments uh, your business into 20 different uh, factors. So you can see there that wheel there, there's five in each sector. Um, and what that does is it gives us all kinds of decision sheets. I have to be real careful when I say that. It gives us as counselors all kinds of decision sheets to walk through some of those, those items with you as a business owner. And, and it really is a great tool for us to not waste your time, for it to be very strategic and say, these are the three things we're working on today. Uh, we've identified those through this conversation. Here are things that you can take as homework and let's, let's move forward together. So Growth Wheel is a really good tool uh, to keep everybody on task, you know, to, to keep us as, as honest consultants. So go ahead, Mark. Okay, some additional tools there. As we said with the market research, we have Vertical IQ, uh, we have BizMiner. BizMiner has a really awesome SWOT analysis tool. Um, you know, I, I always thought uh, growing up, going through school, you know, I, I ended up going into to commercial lending. I was a banker for about five years and then been doing the, the SBDC work for about five years. I thought, oh, everybody always wants to do these dang SWOTs and do they really do anything? But then I actually saw companies that actually did, did, a, uh, did a, a really nice SWOT and put that to work. And I'm like, wow, these, these SWOT analysis can be super beneficial if you do it right. Um, so, so the Biz Miner tool that, that does that SWOT analysis is fantastic. You know, so these are just additional tools uh, that, that we have that can help, help you decide, am I going to make a confident decision based on my next step? Uh, and that's what these tools help us do as counselors is make sure that we're asking the right questions and getting to that root cause and identifying either that right opportunity or that right pain point that we want to assist you with. Um, so, Mark, did you have anything to add on that BizMiner? I know you use it quite a bit. Right. It's it, it's a wonderful financial analysis tool. I, I mean, in addition to uh, over, five, I believe, what, 5,000 industry benchmarks, and, and it's segmented by, by revenue. So, you know, you do under 500, you do over 10 million or, or whatever. But then it, it also uh, allows us to do a, a non-binding business evaluation. 
So if you're wondering uh, what your business is worth, or if you're looking at doing an acquisition, uh, we, we can give you a ballpark. It's non-binding, but it's actually the same tools that a business evaluation professional would use to determine the value of, of an existing business. Um, and then the SWOT analysis is a financial SWOT analysis that relates the different factors that you put in and anywhere from 20 to 25 inputs of course more information you have uh over two to three years um you know three years 25 inputs in your, from your balance sheet and your pnl and it comes back with a really good analysis of the relationship of your financials to your operation so we can look at your operating cycle and see and then and it pulls in benchmark data to compare you to other people in your segment. And uh, it's a great tool for us to see if when we do, when we look at the, uh, your financial statements, if they're on point. And then, uh, you know, if what our analysis compares to that, if, if both of them match up, we know we're heading in the right direction, right? Of course, as Traven mentioned before, uh, it's garbage in, garbage out. So it's only as good as information that, that we put into those tools. But it's, I, I found it a wonderful tool, uh, you know, to really dig deep and, and to give a business owner a sense of where they stand, not only in the market, but then, uh, you know, to look at how to draw that relationship between their P&L, their balance sheet, and their operating cycle, quick ratio, and some of the other things that, you know, a bank may look at, so. Great. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. And so these are tools that, that we can use uh, to help you as a business owner. So that's why we're kind of showcasing them today is just to say, hey, th these are things that we can do. Um, so profit sense is another one. It's a financial tool. As, as uh, Mark said there with, with BizMiner, it can do um, a lot of those things as well. It's just an additional tool that we have. Uh, Esri is, is another tool. That's kind of like the Amazon of GIS, uh, which is geographic information systems. Uh, it's mapping. Uh, one thing that Esri can do is if you were to, to have some of your customer information like addresses, we can actually take those and say, okay, you have 100 customer addresses. We can it, uh, upload that uh, to our Esri database, and then we can get you a profile of your top five customers or however many, however many we want to access. And what Esri has done is it has taken every zip code in the United States and said, okay, there are 67 ar archetypes. There are 67, uh, of course, you know, nothing is exact, but they've basically broken down the United, the United States into 67 different buying sectors. And they, they've put together uh, four, four pagers uh, of, of these types of consumers. So we can find those pockets of consumers like your top five consumers. So if you're thinking about expanding or trying to go maybe somewhere different in Missouri or maybe somewhere in a different state, uh, we can give you a pretty good idea of where pockets of people uh, look like your best customers. Uh, then we can you know, do additional research from there. But that's one thing that, that Esri can do that's pretty powerful is really give you an idea of what your customers look like. Uh, a lot of times that's really tough to know what your customer persona is or your avatar, your avatar customer. One quick note there, uh, I did this for a client in Rolla um, and they found that most of their, their types of customers or archetypes shopped at uh, chain stores like Academy, Marshalls, you know, all, all, of, those, all of those types of, of stores. So they wrapped their vehicle and started parking their vehicle in the parking lot at the new TJ Maxx and Petco, you know, because you can park there. So they wrapped their vehicle, parked their vehicle there every weekend and their sales jumped 15%. Uh, you know, just by doing that, you might think that's common sense, but it gave them a purpose by understanding that not only the demographics and psychographics of their customers, um, it just gave them that push that said, okay, this is something that I can invest in that I think I'll get a return on in investment on. Uh, so that's just a, a different, uh, a couple of different ways that we use Esri as a tool there. So go ahead, Mark. Yeah, and Esri is a, a great tool in that. Uh, you, you can do a, a really close analysis. So if you're wondering, okay, I've got two locations in Fulton, which one is better for my business? And, and then we determine this is who your primary customer is, and we can do like a 20, 20 minute drive time analysis. Uh, I've also used it for a, um, a barbecue chain, was looking at different, uh, different locations actually around the country. And uh, they gave me locations and we, we pulled up uh, beef consumption, pork consumption and things like that. And one location, it was really low. And, and one city they, they, they were uh, trending toward uh, versus a couple of the other locations that their, their partners wanted to consider. But uh, when you see 300% beef and pork consumption in one county and, you know, uh, 
something that's below national average at the location they were considering, um, you know, that, that was a real eye opener for them. And, uh, and it really amazed me that, that we can really drill down to that kind of information of, you know, what types of food consumptions in different areas and overlay that uh, to, to help make that, you know, that decision. And, um, and then on the micro level, you can determine, okay, this is, uh, you know, how much people in this street make on average and, and uh, you know, where's our demographic and where, where are we position our business? So which location would be better? And then the drive time analysis, there's just so many things in Esri, it's, it's amazing. And uh, so, so. Yeah, and they call those customer archetypes a tapestry segmentation. So that's like the yeah. 60 some uh, tapestries that they've, they've built out. And it, like I said, it gives you a four pager, not only about the demographics of those clients, but about the, the psychographics too, how they like to shop, um, you know, what their family size is. Uh, and you can take that and, and they've done it for every zip code um, in the United States. Um, so it's a really powerful tool as, as Mark stated there, we can use it in a, in a variety of ways to, to try to help you uh, you know, answer whatever question it is that we're trying to answer. Um, so real quick, uh, business reference guide, uh, BRG, we, we look at this as a, a, a valuation tool. It gives us a lot of uh, industry standards and benchmarks. It can say, well, if you're thinking about selling your business or buying your business, you know, it's 2x EBITDA, uh, if I say that correctly, which is earnings for interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization. Uh, so we can take a look at your financials or a business's financials uh, and really get a, a ballpark of what that business may be worth or what it should be doing. Um, it also gives a variety of information from a financial standpoint. Um, and then SBDC net, I know Mark, uh, you have a lot of experience with SBDC net. This is actually a proprietary market research tool, but Mark, I'll let you kind of jump in and talk through SBDC net before we move forward. Sure, so SBDC net has a variety of services uh, and we contract with the University of Austin and uh, they have a bunch of uh, PhDs, MBAs uh, with different specializations from human resources and uh, you know, just different areas of interest. And all they do, you know, Monday through Friday is business research. And so they really specialize in business research. So uh, primarily I, I use them when a client comes to me, uh, uh, we'll put a request in and what we'll get is uh, a couple of business plans from uh, similar companies that were previously funded by the SBA. And then we'll look at a, a market analysis, uh, a general. And then uh, they'll also pull a lot of articles on your industry, general startup cost, or if you're farther along, we may do a market analysis. And, um, you know, a general report, uh, may when you, if you printed all the paperwork out and, and all the output from one of their uh, research requests, it would it'd probably be a file of two to three three inches. You know when we actually used to use paper and print it out, and it just amazed me the amount of data. Uh, and another thing you you always get is okay, who's who's in your segment and and what's their revenue? Uh, how many employees do they have? Um, you know, what's the owner's salary? And then you, you get to see all that broken out. And, and I know when I, uh, I first started doing this, some of that information I couldn't believe you can get to, right? And so that's a service that we're able to provide a lot of information. Uh, it usually takes two to three weeks to, to get a request back. And then we, you can also use it for free form. Uh, you know, you're just saying, hey, I got this idea or I have this issue. And uh, could you give me some information on it? And, and we can use that tool. And, and that helps us kind of get that foundation and determine what, you know, what our next steps are. Um, and because it, usually they, uh, you know, they uh, put out a very wide net and then we start to drill that down, right? And uh, as we determine the direction we're going to go and, and what's the appropriate next steps. And, um, you know, it's, it's really important that we keep moving forward, right? And we keep making those decisions. And that's what we want to help small business owners do is, is to make that, you know, to keep moving forward. And, and sometimes you misstep, right? But it, then, then what's important is not that we misstep, but what we learn from that. And then what's our next step? And, and that, we, that we keep progressing. Uh, so, and we've learned from, from that misstep. So, you know, what have we done? What's our success? And, um, 
a couple of our metrics. So in our uh, 2019, uh, 2020 year, um, we helped small business owners get about 228 million in loans and, and other types of uh, capital investments. Uh, uh, we in helped increase sales by 326 million. And um, through such uh, avenues as uh, government contracting, uh, market research and so forth. And then uh, we helped create uh, about uh, 2,374 jobs, right? And, and that's, that's um, these numbers are very, fairly accurate. Um, you know, there's some reporting issues. And of course, uh, there's some of our success we don't always collect on. Uh, but, uh, you know, these are some of the metrics that the SBA judges uh, how we're doing. And, um, and I, think, I think they're pretty good numbers. You know, we, we stack up well when we compare to other states. Uh, for example, uh, when we're helping business owners get PPP loans and EIDL loans, I'm sure a lot of you uh, went down that path. And because of our relationship with the SBA, uh, you know, we're getting the same information the lenders are getting. And in some cases, we're getting more information than the lenders are getting. And, uh, and, and we're helping the lenders, you know, what are their next steps? You know, uh, so I, I spent a lot of my time during uh, the initial PPP and the EIDL rollout uh, educating lenders. Uh, obviously, lenders had nothing to do with EIDL, but they were wondering how that impacts the PPP. And um, so, you know, and so that's another, that's something that the last three to six months, you know, we spent a lot of time doing and, uh, and our relationship with the SBA being funded by them uh, really put us in, in a good position to help small business owners. Now, of course, the process kept changing and the parameters kept changing and, and, and that was kind of, a, uh, you know, kind of frustrating for everybody involved, but uh, Hopefully, uh, every, everyone had a good experience, at least at the end uh, of, of that. So, so what we're here to talk about today uh, is the Missouri SPDC Engagement Center, which uh, Jennifer and Bob Schwartz are heading up. And, and their goal is to help, you know, one of, the, one of the things that we found and that we hear from small business owners over and over is that you're one of the best kept secrets. I wish I would have known before I did this. Uh, you know, I wish I would have known when I started my business. I wish I would have known before I bought that or, or other things of that nature. So uh, Jennifer and Bob are ha heading up this new initiative to help uh, do outreach and connect business owners to the SBDC, uh, to resources and, and a counselor that can help them with, uh, you know, whatever issue they're struggling with. And, uh, and of course, it's all at no cost. Um, and so their team, uh, here we have Jennifer and, and Gretchen and Liz and, and Bob. Um, and then I, you know, I am, um, I'm missing a slide here, guys. I'm missing, um, uh, Jennifer or Bob, do you want to talk about the Outreach Center? I'm missing that slide. Yeah, I'm happy to mention a few words about it, Mark. Yeah, I don't know what happened to that. Uh, our goal is to basically call business owners and offer the services that you've heard about this morning uh, to uh, see if we might be able to assist those business owners. So we're grateful for all of you on the call today. Uh, certainly, you have a chance to do a deeper dive uh, in terms of understanding the types of services and uh, tools and resources we can provide. Um, so uh, if you're interested in connecting with a counselor, uh, happy just to go ahead and have you put uh, your, uh, your contact info into the chat and uh, we'll have a counselor reach out to you. Uh, if not, uh, but uh, you do wind up hooking up uh, with some of our counselors, our services. Um, happy to have you share, share what we do with others. And uh, we are here to, uh, to assist. Yeah, so the purpose of our center is to try to make calls to businesses who may not know about us and to uh, offer the services to those businesses. So, thank you, Bob. And, uh, and I, it was there th this morning when I was going through it, it was there. I must have inadvertently did something um, trying to be prepared for the meeting. So I apologize. Um, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, Jennifer, did you have anything? 
Uh, no, just thank you to Tamara just for the opportunity to um, kind of work with you all on this. Um, again, we'll, we have students that um, we're working with that are um, in their final year of school with um, the university and they've been working really hard doing a lot of desk research um, in the area, learning about the businesses, the business climate. And as they reach out to businesses, really you're just gonna be asking some introductory questions to get you connected with um, with Mark and his team. Um, our goal is to as quickly as possible be able to help folks um, with a pathway um, to, um, to the Mizzou Center. So we look forward um, to working with the folks um, um, in Callaway County. And, um, you know, as Bob said, if you want to drop your name to either Bob or myself, if you, if you don't feel comfortable sending it out to everyone um, in the chat or at the end of the um, at the end of the presentation, there's an email that you can send that to as well. We look forward to visiting with you. Great. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Well, and thank you all for spending time with us today. Uh, do you have any questions for us? Uh, um, I asked people to put uh, questions in the chat and I have not received any questions. Um, can you put up your uh, contact information so that people can jot that down? Hopefully, um, yeah, my screen is blinking, so hopefully uh, it's coming through on, uh, for you guys. So, uh, here's the information for the engagement center. Um, you know, my, uh, my cell phone is 636-357-5745. And, uh, you know, my direct email would be uh, ChristianMA at missouri.edu. Uh, we, we would like, um, you know, as many people as possible to go through the engagement center, but um, if anyone, you know, needs to reach out immediately, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always available. I try to be as well as much as possible. Uh, uh, but, um, so we did have a question, Mark. Mm -hmm. So are the same tools and services available at the LUSBDC in, in Jefferson City? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, uh, I work with Lauren a lot. Um, you know, I, I primarily do uh, help them with government contracting and so forth. But Lauren and I are actually co-sponsoring the profit master courses. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, when you say government contracting, can you kind of just give us a quick, you know, what is that, and how do you all go about doing that? Right. Whether it's city, state, county, federal. Uh, will help you uh, develop your solicitation, uh, you know, find if, if and when appropriate, uh, where uh, possible contracts that you could apply for or qualify for are. Uh, we can also help you, uh, and, and, and that means not just locating solicitation, but developing what's called a capability statement uh, to market yourself to the government. And then also the steps that you take to register with, with SAM, if you're going for a federal contract, or with MoBuys, if you're going for a state contract. But then also, uh, you know, if, if you're looking at working with the city of Columbia or the city of Fulton, uh, you know, any of those type of things, it's a lot of similar process. And uh, we have a, a free tool uh, called BidMatch. And if you are looking, you could tell me, hey, I, I want to find contracts that maybe my business could bid on within 50 miles of um, Fulton. Or you could say, or throughout the state of Missouri, or you could say in Illinois, Missouri, Iowa, uh, or federal contracts anywhere in the US. So. Uh, whatever your, you know, whatever parameters you you uh, have, the bid mass system, we can kind of program it. It's like Google, right, with the right keywords, and and come up with just solicitations that you would be interested in bidding on. Uh, but just like in Google, uh, it takes a, you know, sometimes it takes a few times to get those keywords right. So instead of going out and looking at all the, the state websites and all the agency websites, the, and and uh, you know, different federal agency websites and so forth to determine if there's a possible contract that you're interested in, uh, you should be able to get those, those solicitations in an email, right? And so you're spending more time bidding and less time looking for opportunities to bid. Uh, 
Okay. And so, so it's a great program. And, you know, if you were in a similar program as an individual or company, if you go out and, 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 uh, and sign up, uh, it would cost you probably this, this particular service would cost you about $1,300 a year. And, uh, because we bulk it up, right? We put all of our clients and and we pay for it. Uh, right now, we're able to offer that for free to our clients. So I think that's a great service. Uh, now, having said that, you know, not everyone is a good fit for government contracting, right. and and I would suggest that you need to look at government contracts as a, a way to diversify your revenue stream. Right? Uh, we we see a lot of business owners. Uh, they think that, hey, I got a good contract, I'm doing great, and that's the only thing they have to do. And then they lose that contract and, and they're lost, right? Um, and, and also, uh, there are a lot of cash flow issues, right? Especially initially as you get into government contract uh, that you need to be prepared for. And by diversifying your revenue streams, it makes you better able to handle those. You know, when that 30-day contract, you know the government's going to pay, but uh, it's a, it should be a, a 30 day uh, turnaround on pay and so forth. But a lot of times if it's your initial, the initial uh, uh, contract with an agency, it may take 60 or 90 days before you get that first check and you've got to carry, you know, those employees and all your overhead and you've got to perform. You don't perform, you, you probably won't get a, another contract with that agency, especially at the federal level. Mm -hmm. So, so we kind of help people baby step through the process and try to make sure they're ready uh, before they, you know, they take that next step. And of course, we suggest that you start local, right? Because you can manage that better and there's less, less repercussions of if, if you do fail. And then also you look at uh, subcontracting to learn more about uh, how contracts, you know, how the contract actually operates and, and so forth. And uh, as a subcontractor, the prime has to carry, they have to pay you. They may not get paid yet, but they have to pay you. And so there's a lot less stress on, on the small business owner and it's, it helps, uh, you know, helps that learning curve. So, uh, and then in addition, uh, we help with all your certifications, whether it's a, a state certification or, you know, city of St. Louis has their own uh, certification, Kansas City has their own certifications. So we help with that process. Okay. All right, so we did have another question. Uh, profit mastery, is that for Columbia businesses only or a class site located in Columbia only? How is that gonna work? Because I've heard of prop, profit mastery. Um, I went mm -hmm. through kind of a um, kind of the cliff notes of profit mastery before they had the main kickoff at the Callaway Bank uh, two years right. ago. But right. um, I think it's something that's very beneficial, especially for small businesses. I have a couple of small businesses in our community that just swear by Profit Mastery and go to it every time it happens because they always learn something new. So can you kind of tell us about how that's going to take place? Is that through Zoom? Is it in the classroom? Who can sign up? How much does it cost? Um, it, it's going to be uh, through Zoom. It's going to be virtual. And uh, we're, we're going to initially offer it to clients in, in uh, Lorna and in, in Jeff City uh, in Lincoln's area and my, in my area. So my six county clients uh, will get first preference. We have about 50 seats available. Um, I'm still working on the cost. I think uh, we're, gonna be able to, we're gonna be able to cover the initial cost for this pilot. Uh, and if it's successful, then uh, we'll do others. Um, so I, I've been through the program and uh, I've been through the different segments of the course a few times. And uh, we're looking at certifying, uh, me becoming a certified facilitator. So we can offer it live and uh, without having to bring in uh, somebody from Seattle to teach the course. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then Lauren uh, at Lincoln is also looking to become a certified uh, facilitator. And then, uh, so if the pilot goes well, and, I, and, I, and thank you so much for that feedback that just, you know, makes me feel good about it because uh, we, we haven't done that uh, through the SBDC before. Uh, I, uh, Callaway invited, well, actually the, the Profit Mastery invited me to sit in on uh, the Callaway. I'd been at National Convention and sat on uh, and, uh, and and believed in them. And then when they were in town, they said, hey, why don't you come sit in? 
because we don't have any, but we don't have any facilitators here in Missouri. And um, so I, I'm really excited that, uh, you know, if it goes well, we will become certified facilitators and we'll be able to offer it, uh, you know, on a regular basis. So is, is Callaway County in your territory? Where yes, ma'am. Okay, perfect. That's, yes, that's key. So when will we know the dates for that and how to sign up? So I'm still um, still trying to get them paid uh, so they can come offer. But right okay. now we, we have dates uh, set in February. Everything's been approved. I just need to hear back from Steve that he got it and then we'll start the marketing. Uh, but tentatively, we, we have dates starting in February. Okay. And you said and it's it, going to be six different classes? It'll be a six-week course. Okay. And the way, the way it's set up and uh, that we can offer for free is that uh, uh, Steve will come in and facilitate, and then we will record it. And then, uh, uh, and then you'll do a class, and if you miss a class, it's recorded. Or if you need to review material, it's recorded. And then after the class, before the next class – then you need to meet with the SBDC counselor, you know, in case you had any questions or anything like that to, to discuss it, uh, the class and so forth in a one-on-one -on -one setting with each student in the class. And then the next week we do it again. And again, you can review the video material or, and if you miss one, the video material is going to be there available for you. And, um, and so it's, it's really kind of trying to combine uh, you know, all the best in education theory, right? Mm -hmm. That you provide that one-on-one -on -one counseling so that the folks that don't want to ask questions during a class can, can get that one-on-one -on -one and they can ask those questions and deal with their particular business, you know, whatever they're struggling with, whatever they're in the class, these questions they have, they'll have someone they can go to that is also in the class, um, more than likely, uh, that uh, can answer their questions, right? And, uh, and then they come back the next week and there'll be uh, an overview again of what was covered the previous week uh, and then the new material and then it all will be recorded. And, um, and, you know, and you do it again and again for six weeks. So. Well, I, in our chat over here, uh, Cindy Baker, which is one of our business owners with, uh, she owns Aaron Runners, and she's also uh, one of the counselors for the Missouri Women's Business Center, has taken Profit Mastery twice, and she says it's well worth the investment, and I've heard that from several other businesses in uh, Callaway County that have went through the program. So we're excited about that, that you all will be offering that. Yeah, so I'm hoping to be able to offer it, um, you know, a few times a year. Uh, to keep your certification uh, as an instructor, you have to offer at least once a year. So hopefully uh, we'll be able to offer it way more than once a year. Okay, well, perfect. Okay, if there's no other questions or comments, we really appreciate Mark and Jennifer and Bob and Travis for their time today. Um, we look forward to working with the SBDC over the coming weeks and assisting our businesses in Callaway County. Um, I will send out an, an email to those that participated today uh, with the contact information for the SBDC. There was an email that went out yesterday uh, that gave a, a website so that they could get more information. But if you need help connecting with the SBDC um, or help with some specific items with your business, just let us know and we will uh, help you with that partnership. So I appreciate your time today and thank you for joining us. Thank you all so much. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks, Tamara.